Hey everybody, welcome back to Plugin Tut. As always, I'm your host Matt, and this is your home for handcrafted WordPress plugin tutorials. In today's episode, we're gonna talk about building a WordPress website, making the decisions of selecting a WordPress theme, and when do you know a theme isn't right for your particular project? Now, I received a question over on PluginTut.com. We're going to read this one right now. It's from Peggy Bragg. And she says, hi, Matt. Great presentation of 2017 theme. I am very new at WordPress. I love it so far. Uh, I've been hired to do an e-commerce website with WooCommerce plugins. I am using 2017 theme for this site, but I'm totally confused with this theme on how to do it with the site. Do you recommend using 2017 theme for this type of website? Uh, the website will be for a jewelry store. Do you have any recommendations for a theme? Uh, that would be easy to use for a store like this. Any suggestions uh, would be greatly appreciated. This is a great question, uh, Peggy. One that is very difficult to uh, really dive into uh, because it, the answer is always depends, right? It always depends on what the expectations are uh, from you as the designer, developer, the implementer, whatever you sort of label yourself uh, in the uh, freelance or, or business world and uh, what your expectations are from your customer and what the goals are for a specific uh, website. There's a lot here. Uh, and I feel like in the WordPress space, so many people come in uh, with using WordPress by default and they just try to cram everything into whatever WordPress gives it out of the box. So in this case, 2017, it's sort of labeled as a business theme, which uh, I would say that it very much is, but still for a very specific uh, vertical of businesses, right? Um, certainly not a WooCommerce driven theme. Um, that's for sure. But we're going to dive into that in this video and short, sort of show you the ins and outs of that. So let's just go right into the 2017 theme. And I'm going to try, I'm going to make, make my best effort to make this a jewelry store website. And, you know, nine times out of 10, any, any WordPress theme could be any business that you want it to be, right? So 2017 could be a jewelry store. 2017 could be a coffee shop. It's no different. As long as you're using uh, imagery, photographs, video, um, illustrations, that kind of thing, something that represents that business or that brand, you're putting those into those areas of a theme and it just looks like it because that's what the photography looks like, right? That's what the, um, that's what the imagery looks like. It's when you get under the hood and you need something like WooCommerce to operate correctly or another marketing um, you know, piece of software or whatever it might be, presentation of content, that's when the lines really start to become clearer whether or not a theme works, right? So let's just go right into this. Um, I typically use uh, a website called Unsplash, right? So unsplash.com. And from here, like if I'm building a, uh, you know, a new site or something like that, or I'm blogging and I need some featured images, that kind of thing, or I'm making featured images for YouTube, uh, I'm just going to come here and I'm going to just type in jewelry and Unsplash will find whatever sort of creative commons uh, images that there are. But there's another plugin that I'm just going to hop over to already in my example site. I've already got it installed. It's called Instant Photos and, uh, oops, Instant Images, excuse me. And I'm going to go ahead and just uh, search for jewelry here. I'm going to pull in some example photos. Now you can apply today's lesson to any website uh, that you're building. It just so happens to be a jewelry store that we're talking about today. So I'm going to go ahead and say, yes, I like that one. That's going to download that one, that one. Um, I know that there's some in here that look like uh, that have watches. So uh, watches. All right. So we, we've got the assets. We've got the images here that are going to really represent a jewelry store. And let's just go right into uh, the homepage of the 2017 theme. Now, one of the great things about 2017, it's got this great big area that we, we use to customize uh, an image. And this one's certainly going to play well with um, this image here. I'm not going to crop any of this stuff. I'm just going to put it right in. And then I'm going to rename my website to my jewelry store. A place to buy diamonds. Now, this is lesson number one. Um, I recently did another video on customizing 2017 uh, with another plugin. I'm not going to use that in this video. I'm trying to keep this as condensed as, as possible. But this is it, right? This is the header for 2017 theme. This is the header that we're going to get for your, ju your jewelry store. Um, again, you can customize a little bit further with that plugin that I showed you. But for 
all purposes, you know, for building this default theme and really not breaking it um, with custom CSS or things like that. I shouldn't say breaking it, but, you know, really going a step further. This is all you're going to get. So right out of the gate, right, if you are not happy with the way that this lays out um, in the first few minutes of building this jewelry uh, website, this jewelry website, then we're out of luck, right? We're out of luck and, and you need to go and find a different theme. So if you were to say like, well, yeah, this is great, but how do we, you know, where's the option to, to shrink uh, all of this space? My customer or my client doesn't want all this space between the top of the browser to, um, you know, the site title. This is it. And I see this time and time again, like this is why themes are designed. This is why they're called themes. It's the theme. It's the design of the site. Um, if you're looking for a boatload of options to customize all this stuff, that's when you want to look to something like a Beaver Builder theme or a Divi theme. But the warning with that, and I've said this uh, a, a bunch of times on this channel, uh, especially if you watch my featured themes versus page builder themes video, um, the drawback is there's a boatload of options that you're going to be messing with, right? So then you say to yourself, well, okay, well, how do we find a theme that's going to work for this? Um, and that's what the, that's what the, the challenge is. Um, today. So now we're going to switch the colors to a dark color. I think it plays a little bit better with the black and white photos just because of, you know, of what we have here. And I'm going to get out of this and I'm going to set up the, the pages that, um, I think are going to line up well with the jewelry store, right? So I, we downloaded, um, a watches image. We downloaded a rings image and we got another one in there, but I'm just going to, for now, I'm just going to set up these two and I'm going to just pull in some text. Whoops. I'm going to pull in some example text from the Ipsum site. I'm sure there's a million uh, options out there for people to do this. I usually just hop over to this site, grab some filler text, and copy and paste this into my WordPress site. So that's watches. And I'm going to give the featured image the watch. And I'm going to publish that. I'm going to go back and set up the rings. I'm going to actually specifically call it engagement rings. Just like to be detailed like that. I'm going to publish this. Forgot to apply the graphic. And um, just because I know how this site or how this theme works, I'm going to create another one. So I'm going to say sales, sale, last minute sales, <laughs> last minute deals. And I'm going to fill that and then put in another, let's say this one, set featured image, publish. Okay. So let's just, let's just work with that. So the, what did I just do there? I just went and I set up some filler content, some placeholding text, um, some placeholding graphics, just so we can go ahead and build out, uh, build out the homepage. So let's go back to customizing the site. And let's see, this is still the blog page. So I'm going to go to, let's see, I forget where static front page, static page. So welcome to the home page is going to be, um, the default page that, you know, that we're using, I'm calling it welcome to the home page. And then the post page will be the blog page. We're not going to get into doing the blog and setting that up in this video, uh, today, but you can see here that I've already got some things laid out from a previous video. And I'm just going to replace this with those placeholding uh, images and then I'll explain what I did. So we got, uh, watches. What else did I set up? Uh, last minute deals, which I spelled wrong, obviously. And I thought I did rings, but engagement rings. That's what I did. Engagement rings. So save and publish that. So again, I'm, I'm, Speaking of specifically about 2017, if you want to go watch the uh, the video that I did, uh, you can learn how to actually customize it. But it's got these three sections or four sections, and you can go in, you can identify which pages you want promoted to the front page, and then the and then uh, it's going to pull in the featured image and then the content uh, with that page. Okay, so let's just take a look at that. If this were my jewelry store, I have my uh, first starting image, I have my welcome to the home page uh, text, and then this. Uh, watch featured image that has this like this big parallax uh, scrolling effect. And then I can put the content in, um, you know, about watches right here. And then the, uh, another featured image, again, last minute deals, you saw me set that up. And then again, rings the content there. And then I have, I'm not going to put anything in that last section just so we can keep moving along. So 
Same deal, uh, if you like this layout, right? If this layout works for you in your particular website, then, then yes, the, this is, this is the good, a good theme for you. But if this layout is not gonna work for you, uh, if you don't like the way the content is presented, you know, for example, how do we, you know, I don't want to say watches on the left, what about all this space over here? These are questions that I get all the time, uh, you know, dealing with so many other themes in the WordPress space. Well, you could do something like one column or two columns, and in one column, that's one option that you have. You have these two options, basically. You have one column and two column in 2017, and it's just gonna stack that page title above your content here. So that's it. That's it in terms of customizing it outside of, you know, really going in with some custom CSS and HTML and, and maybe JavaScript to make things happen differently, but these are the options you have. If this works for you, that's great. I think that this already looks like a great jewelry store website. If the jewelry store website just wanted to display sort of marketing content and product information and like where to find them, that kind of thing. But here comes the rub. This is the part where we integrate WooCommerce or we don't integrate WooCommerce because there is no real way, <laughs> right? So let's just save and publish that. I've already installed WooCommerce. I've got a link in my navigation here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and hit shop. And this is where it starts to sort of break down. Uh, I just got some default content in here for WooCommerce, and you can see that, you know, the shop page works, right? We got the we got the products. Uh, you know, it's there are some things here that could be styled a little bit better uh, for this particular color scheme. You know, I, I can read the stuff, I can add it to the cart, I can view my cart, but then you start to see all the little nuances where, if we go back. You know, we have the sidebar here. The sidebar is always going to be here. You can't select templates per page for 2017 right now, which I th found myself scratching my head over, which uh, maybe they're, just, they're not going to release them just yet, or they eventually will, like a full width template, that kind of thing. So this sidebar will always be here with you, which is kind of eh, right? So if you're doing a lot of, you know, if you're doing a lot of blogging, like this site has a bunch of default content in here. So, or placeholding content. So if I had blog a blog going for the last few years and you're, you know, depending on what your sidebar is, you, all of that's going to show up on your shop page, which doesn't always necessarily lead to the best conversion rates if you're into that kind of thing. But if it doesn't bother you, it doesn't bother you. For me, I'd rather have nice full width product pages, that kind of thing. And then when you go to the add to the cart, which I already did, but let's go view the cart. Uh, you know, just the styling doesn't you know, line up very well, specifically not on this uh, dark theme that I had chosen. And, uh, you know, like the coupon doesn't align with the apply coupon button. There's a lot of broken sort of, um, you know, styles right here. But again, this theme doesn't come out of the gate and say we are uh, WooCommerce compatible, um, or at least it's not marketed that way in, in my eyes. So, uh, and even up here, like the cart link is up here, if you had the two column layout. So for example, if I switch this back to a two column layout, Theme options, two column. You can see that that all that does is take the page title and move it to the left hand side, and then drop in that sort of white space uh, below it, which pushes everything in the cart here. Again, it's gonna work. It's just not gonna look that professional. And depending on what you're selling, uh, you know, if you were selling like an ebook, maybe not a big deal. Uh, Nine dollar, twenty dollar ebook, whatever. Even maybe a hundred dollar ebook. But if you're selling uh, jewelry for a few hundred dollars and maybe you're hoping for somebody to check out uh, of your website with a thousand dollars worth of items, it's not going to be the best uh, sort of, you know, branded experience in my eyes. Now, you know, for me, uh, details are very important. Design is very important, uh, you know, when you have the budget for it and it, when it really matters to, um, you know, the business. And in this case, I would say that, look, this, this checkout page isn't really good for this uh, type of uh, type of setup. Now, let's go back to the home page because it's actually let me get out of the customizer. Uh, I'm going to go to the dashboard one more time, pages, and I want to just look at one of the pages I just recently set up. Shop, oh, not the shop page, sorry, the rings page. And I'm going to view this page. So, again, this is what a um, this is what a featured image or how a featured image will appear on uh, the 2017 theme. So you're going to have that header image, which was going to be consistent throughout the entire website. So that will always be there uh, with your navigation that sort of sticks once you scroll past it. So if you kind of notice there, I know I've got this WordPress admin bar that sort of 
kind of, uh, you know, you can kind of messes with that a little bit, but you know, it sticks to the top of the page and your featured image takes up this full, uh, this full width. And you could uh, probably get an even larger image to sort of scale all the way uh, full width, but this is how it's going to represent uh, your interior pages, which again, if you're using this as just a marketing site, that kind of thing, not a bad choice. Uh, but otherwise I would say that when you want to customize this and put products in here or really customize the layout uh, per page, it's really not going to happen. One major example would be, you know, ultimately somebody would say, okay, great. Even if I use these, like the watch page, the jewelry page, the sales page, let's say I want to make all that stuff and kind of craft all those pages myself. No problem. How do I get my uh, WooCommerce products to the homepage, right? How do I get my WooCommerce products to the homepage? There's no option for that uh, in this theme. You'd have to use something um, well, you could use my note plugin that I have that that we created over at the studio, but even that's not going to be the perfect scenario for that. So even if I went something like, um, let's see, you see, you're not even able to do it here other than on maybe this top part right here. Yeah, because because of the way that 2017 pulls in. Uh, this content, there's no beginning or end. So I could do something like uh, drop in a note sidebar right here and then drop in a widget. And my widget would be, let's say, doo -doo -doo -doo, WooCommerce products. I'm just gonna say show five. But even that is gonna be in a list. You can't really, uh, you can't really style it like that. So the, my note plugin will allow you to drop in a sidebar anywhere above or below the content. Uh, of a page, uh, you know, above the, below the title and above the content and below the content. And you can drop in any kind of widget here, but see WooCommerce isn't styled. The WooCommerce widget isn't styled for this particular theme. It's just sort of a, it's really just a hack way to get some products in there. Otherwise you find yourself linking to the shopping page uh, within each uh, of your interior marketing pages. So you might look at your watches and say, you know, I'm going to write all my information about my watches and why you should buy watches from us and then have a link to the shop pages, uh, to the shop page or the specific category page of watches that you're selling. Uh, so it's a very manual process. It doesn't really allow you to move products in and out of the homepage. So, you know, when you're looking at themes, I know it's a tough, I know it's a tough way to evaluate things to sort of dive in and, you, and you're not sure which ones you're going to, uh, which ones you're really going to roll with. Uh, you know, the, the issue becomes styling this stuff, moving WooCommerce in and out, um, at, at least in this scenario. I feel like 2017 is a great marketing site for maybe a jewelry shop or any kind of shop, but it's when you want to integrate WooCommerce a little bit deeper. That's when it sort of falls uh, flat. Uh, well, big time, especially if you want to bring products to the homepage, uh, that becomes a big challenge. Uh, you know, otherwise it works great for marketing, not going to be the best for WooCommerce. Like I said, this applies, excuse me, to any WordPress theme that you're evaluating. Take a look at all of the angles that they have available. So in the end, you know, you want to pick a theme that you can trust from a provider that you can trust that you know is going to be supported. Um, not just the theme itself, but through for WordPress, for WooCommerce, for all the integrations that you're going to have uh, inside of it. You know, take a good hard look at where you're getting your themes from. Um, and, you know, if you are somebody who's selling websites to somebody, you really should have, uh, you know, spend some time getting a good foundation under view, a good set of tools to use this stuff. Um, nothing worse than just throwing something out there because you were hired, hired to do it and you, you know, saw an opportunity to make some money and you just went at it, but you didn't care about uh, where, you know, things were going to go with in terms of, you know, a year from now, you know, who's going to be doing the updates, where the updates come from, WooCommerce, WordPress, this theme provider, how do I make, because you're really going to make yourself um, a big headache <laughs> later on if we're not making the good decisions early on. It's PluginTut.com, YouTube.com slash PluginTut. If you enjoy videos like this, thumbs up, like it, friends, uh, tell your friends and family about it. It helps us get found. We'll see you in the next video.